Welcome to Humor Me with Ed Krasnick. I tell you, we have a great show tonight. Uh, an amazing guest, Sarah Colonna, is here. She's here, and she's actually sitting four, four inches from me, and I pretend that yet that she's not here through the magic of uh, whatever this is called. I think it's called the Internet. Um, it, whatever this is. And, and uh, you know, I have a problem. The thing is that you have to learn how to be is be in the present. My problem is I live in the past. I live in the past so much that when I go on a seesaw, it's a saw-saw. That's Sarah. Sarah's hand. We'll be right back. No good. Uh, <laughs> we're going to start again. I didn't like it. No. Uh, I have to tell you, usually I would do a monologue here, but there's really no reason to do that. And this is something that I talked about before. You know, like everybody who does a show here, they do the monologue, and then the guest is actually sitting four inches from you. So you're performing in front of someone and they're sitting there, and I've had that done to me, and I don't, I don't fucking like it. So uh, I'm gonna go right to talk no, to Sarah. No, keep doing your monologue. Okay, it's, right, I like. Me, do you like it so yeah, far? Yeah, I'm gonna okay. leave in about five minutes. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's the test of a true comedian: is that you do it in front of another comic, and then if it, they sit across from you while you do it, that's how we train. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not even gonna say. Do you know that there's a show on television? Well, there's many shows on television. Yeah, there's a few shows on television, <laughs> but, but but there's one show called Vermin. called After Lately, and I haven't seen you since, and I just want to say congratulations to you. Thank you, and to you. Well, thanks, because that show got picked up. It did. It did, and you were. I Ed worked with. Um, who am I talking to? When I, I don't said know Ed who you're saying. What's where's but, your camera? That's it right there. <laughs> I know, but I was trying to figure out who I was talking to. You're talking in to me general. as if really, I'm, I'm not me. Really, I'm talking to you, yeah. saying congratulations. Well, thank you to you as well. Um, you know, technically, you are my boss on the show. I don't... Oh, you're right. I, I, I was. I am. Have I told you how terrific right. you look? No, I forgot about that. You look that. great! Thank you no, so much. Um, you're no, fired. No, <laughs> you, no you, you guys did a great job with that show. I mean, it I was I think terrific. everybody did. It was I, fun as I hell agree. to work on. But it's, it's very... Oh, you know what? We were going to do something. Can I just show... Let me just show a clip. Okay. And then we'll come back. I'll tell, we'll show people. If you have not watched this show... You have to see it. It's really, it's about the relationships between the uh, people that work on Chelsea Lately and Chelsea Handler. And it's really about, it's based on real things that have happened. I think it's the first show that's ever been done like that. But it's a sitcom. So Sarah is actually playing, I mean, everybody's sort of playing themselves or aspects of themselves. So I'm glad that I could de it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but right now, take a look at a clip from After Lately, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll talk to Sarah. It's so disgusting. I know. I cannot believe you've worn that thing all day. No, no. Someone took another huge dump in the first stall. Did you see anybody coming in or out? No, but there's like a little note in there. In the same stall? Like it fell out of someone's pocket, the person that left the dump. A note that, like, look, I'm sorry, I left No, this. no, like a note with, uh, like, a personal type of number or something. I can't really see, but there's a note in there that has a number. Like a phone number? I don't know. Well, it could be evidence. It's obviously from the person that didn't flush, so get the note. I know, but I don't want to touch it. It's, who cares? It's in the flush. bathroom. It's disgusting. It's not disgusting. What's disgusting like, is they're not flushing. So just get the note. We need the note to find out who's going to the bathroom. Don't you want to get to the bottom of this? All right, I'll go. I'll, just, I'll deal with it. Okay. What's the big deal? It's a note. This sweater is so ugly. This is it. I'm so close to the truth that I can taste it. And it tastes like <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Oh, why is it all dry and crinkly? Because I blow dried it. Why did you have to blow dry it? Because it was wet. Why was it wet? Because it was inside the toilet. Oh my god, what are you talking about it was inside the toilet? I thought it was on the floor. No, I told you it was in the side of the toilet. No, you didn't. You said it was in there. I thought you meant you didn't say it was floating around. You do, how did you get it out? I just took some tissue into my hands and I got it that out. That tissue didn't protect you from anything. That is, don't you ever touch my stuff again. You are weird. That is disgusting. Get that off my desk. This isn't going to help us. We can't touch this. We can't touch this thing. You told me to go get it, Sarah. I didn't tell you to go stick your hand in the dirty toilet. I told you to get a note that I thought was on the floor. You are so weird. All right, Sarah, let's just work as a team and find who the perpetrator is. And can you please not tell anybody that I stuffed my hand in a toilet? Could you just keep that to yourself? Don't tell anybody else that you just stuck your hand in a dirty toilet bowl full of urine and I'm telling everybody. 
All right, I don't know what to say about that clip. That is amazing. Sadly, it's based on a true story. It actually That's, happened. Yeah, it happened. And she went and stuck her hands. Like somebody was going to the bathroom and not flushing in the office. And we were all trying to investigate it, and nobody was obviously coming clean. Why, why would you say, yeah, that's me, I don't go, you know. And then Heather went and saw a note, and it had a number on it, which turned out to be, well, we can't really say, I don't can't think. Can't say it. Well, I think it was like an airline flight number. We think it was somebody that's not there anymore. But we never proved it. But she went, and we said, get the note out of the bathroom. She put her hand in the toilet, brought it out. And we're, that's fantastic. I just thought it was on the floor. I didn't think she was going to actually go fish her hand around in a dirty toilet bowl. <laughs> but Who she's, does that? But she's a mom. Or she's just crazy. She's a crazy mom. <laughs> she's a crazy mom. Yeah. That's what's so fantastic about that. But, but the thing is, it's not easy to play yourself. It's not, it's not that easy because when a camera's on, you think the immediate thing is, I got to do more. Yeah. And, and what, you get weird. And you get weird. Yeah. And what's so great about you and Brad and Chris and everybody who's on the show is that they don't get weird. You mean just me, though, right? No, it's you. You're yeah. the best. You're thank an excellent actress. You really are. Oh, thank you. What, when you see that stuff, I mean, what does it look like to play yourself? Because you, this is a kind of a different, I mean, you've acted in a lot of stuff before, but to play yourself, to play something that's very close to you. Well, sometimes play, I was like, oh, I'm, I guess I'm pretty cranky. <laughs> I watch myself on the show. I'm like, is that, am I playing myself or am I being, and then I realized I guess I'm not always in a great mood. <laughs> but because I think I felt like after Chelsea, I was like the crankiest one on the show. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, but, what, but everybody has like, you know, if you were writing a character, they'd have like a certain, you know, there'd be a certain trait or certain kinds of traits that I, they have. And everybody has those and things. And as one of the writers, you yeah. wrote me as cranky. You look great. Have Thank I told you. you how great you uh -huh. look? You Thank look you. terrific. And congratulations on the show again. Thank you. I, I think I feel weird because I'm wearing rain boots. Yeah, I feel a little weird. It was raining when I left the house, but then it stopped raining this morning, so I'm wearing them all day. So, what did Chelsea say to you when you came in with rain boots and it wasn't raining? She said, "Why are you wearing rain boots?" And you said, "It's ra it was raining." And she said, "When?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought when you, I left the house, it was. I thought you would have said, "When?" Obviously, Last I get up. Year? I get up yeah. before her. Obviously. My God, when you come into the office in the morning. Um, and I know you guys like gather for a meeting and stuff like that. Is it is it like does everybody? I don't really. Does everybody snap too, or do people have morning like rituals that oh, they do? Oh. Well, there's a couple gross things that happen. Josh Wolf and Chris Angela both brush their teeth at their desk, <laughs> which I don't get because you need water for that, and they're not used. They're just brushing it dry, which makes a horrible sound. Like it actually makes my skin crawl. To think oh about it. god, yeah. yeah. Mm. They do that, and then. We all kind of like get ourselves together. Heather eats her oatmeal and you know, that those are kind of normal, but then the meeting itself, people start ye like yelling right away. There's yellers, there's Tom, there's Brad. They, they're ready in the morning to start yelling. And, and sometimes it takes me a minute, so I get a headache. Yeah, and there's pitching. And maybe that's why I get cranky. <laughs> I don't blame you, people are yelling. You know, it's like yeah. It's you're wearing rain boots. It's not raining. It's not good. That's not good. No, That's embarrassing. No, it is not. Yeah. Um, you. So now let's go back a little bit here because um, I can't live in the present. Um, <laughs> let's go back. Uh, you were you on a show called Scare Tactics? I is was. That true? Um, yeah, I was on Scare Tactics. Now I knew. I think I knew there was an actor named Travis. Travis Draft. Yeah. Yeah. He was an old friend of mine. Oh, okay. But yeah, I don't. I but I haven't him. talked to him in a long time. But he was a great. He was a terrific actor. Yeah. That's a different kind of acting. I think I might have made it out with him one time. Oh, for Christ's sakes. I do. That's a different. I hope it was good. For I'm not sure. All right. Um, there's a di there's a different kind of acting with that, and it's something that I could never do as a performer, which is you have to keep in character even though somebody's crying. Yeah, crying and or, or scree. I was chased one time. I've been chased a few times actually during that show because you get people get so like the show itself was to you know if people don't know it was to a hidden camera show where we'd set people up in these extreme situations and mm. then they had to we had to convince them as actors that they were really in that situation. I mean, I, I gave birth to a, a Satan baby, which was just a little. In front of a some... little guy, yeah. and she believed, but she believed it. She was screaming, "I believe in Jesus. I don't believe in this." Like, you know, I had people, you know, I had someone convinced I was you know, my husband. Like, this woman came over to take care of me, and I was chained to a bed, and and then when my husband left, because she was like my nurse for the day, I I showed her my chains, and she, she like made her believe that he had kidnapped me, and 
run over me and <laughs> kept Jeez. me like misery basically. Oh my god. So the girl totally believed it. So people have severe reactions. Severe reactions. But Some you, did. your job to is keep a to keep a straight face. Yeah. I, I can't do that. You have to make someone believe they're in a situation they're not in and they don't know. Obviously. I think I, I think I've been in relationships like that, yeah. but never like in a sketch or a hidden camera show. Yeah. It hasn't been filmed. No. Um, well you think so. My <laughs> therapist has heard about it, but it hasn't been filmed. Yeah. It'd be a lot it easier it. if it was. Uh yeah. Yeah. Now you but but uh, so that's a different kind of acting. Yeah, and you have th the weirdest thing is you have a little, you know, thing in your ear, so you're listening because they give you sort of, okay, someone's freaking out or they'll say call the bit or something because it was like if somebody really started to panic they would s just want you to say I'm you know we're on scare tactics because they wouldn't want you to get I but mean one guy took a like not really a swing at me but he was he was trying to get past me I don't want to say he was going to punch me but he was it wasn't a swing he was trying to get he was past reaching me. for corn chips yeah yeah he was trying to get past me uh -huh. and get to the corn chips. Right, the corn chips were there. But they said, you have to call the bit. Sarah, I heard them saying, Sarah's going to get punched. Somebody call the bit. And so then I was like, well, I'll call it if I need to because I didn't want to get punched. That's a wild kind of yeah. uh, acting. Yeah. And, and it didn't bother you? Like you didn't have a problem? It wasn't tough for you to do that? You know what? I felt bad one. I felt, the first time I felt bad, this kid kind of started crying. And he said, um, I'm just a dancer. <laughs> We had him in, a, I don't know, we, I forget what was the situation was. It was like a military thing where he was like out working in this random trailer in the middle of the desert because we shot it in Las Vegas. And he basically thought we were looking for something, this crazy serial killer or something. Uh, anyway, Man. the kid got freaked out and started crying. Oh boy. So I felt bad because I thought, well, now there's a, you know, like a 21-year-old kid crying. But five minutes later, he's laughing with the person that set him up and you just go... They get over it. They're, I mean, you know, there's people are so happy to be on TV. <laughs> it's just really horrible. <laughs> that you, uh, it is. <laughs> but I thought, well, all right, I guess if he's not, you know, if he's, I mean, he was all excited and, you know, calling all his friends after and when it came on, you know, making everyone watch the show and all that stuff. So, yeah. how bad can I feel? You can't feel bad. He's, uh, he's in an institution now. That's his problem. Yeah. It's not your problem. No, I didn't have anything. You didn't do anything. No, my uh, check cleared. <laughs> Why? Now, 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 you're. So, how long ago did you? You started like when? Like four years ago on Chelsea? On Chelsea lately? No, not three years ago. Three, yeah, doing the round table, and then I think I've only been writing there for two. So you started time, doing the round time. table three, I, but then you after it took a year for you to get on staff. Yeah, I didn't know that. Or maybe it's three and four, but I think it's. I think I've been there for two. years. I don't even know. So you started, started doing the round table. I started doing the round table. Did that for a while. Yeah, for about a year. And then eventually Tom Brunel, who you know yeah. very well. Amazing guy. Yeah, the best. He is really good. He really is, yeah. And then he and Chelsea called me and said, do you want to do full time? And since that time, um, how has your... I mean, how's your? Because you you do stand up as well. You do mm -hmm. the comedians of Chelsea Lately tour. Because it's it, this is a, a totally unique job in television. This is a there's nothing like this. No, definitely not. Uh, you are you will write on a late night show. That's every day. Yeah. Then you perform on tour. You'll go on the weekend. On the weekends. And yeah. then you perform on tour. And then there becomes this whole book thing. Yes. Now. We're writing a book. Yes. I know you've written a book. Yes, I have. So well, we're going to ask about all that. But you're doing it all simultaneously, and now there's a show called After Lately where you're going to act and you're a, an EP, a co-EP, mm -hmm. right? Co, yeah. So Well, actually, it was just producer, but, but you do, it sounds better when you say, say co-EP. Co -EP. So you, but, but you're doing all that stuff simultaneously. Yeah. So what do you learn about yourself from doing that, and do you become better? Uh, do you just trust that you can like do anything? And No, you definitely become better, and it makes yeah. me work harder, especially with stand-up and stuff, because I, you know, I was doing stand-up on the road here and there and in town, but not to this level of, like, the kind of crowds that we have now because people know the show and they get excited you know or if we open for Chelsea it's it, I've performed at Radio City I've now performed at Coliseum not my you know I didn't sell the tickets myself they were <laughs> but I opened for Chelsea and there were 5,000 people there and it, I mean that so that kind of stuff has definitely made me a lot better because you have to work harder because you can't go half-ass something like that right because you're never gonna get to do it again right right so and you can you have to be I mean it's not like you, you have to be good. You yeah. can't go out and not be a strong comic. Yeah, no, definitely. So. Yeah, we all have to be at this point. So, you know, and it just makes you work harder on that. 
and it, it's tiring, but I also used to have a catering job and then, you know, during the day and then call hotels like mid afternoon and do secret shopping and then go bartend at night. And that sucked worse. <laughs> yeah, well, sure. I'd rather have these three jobs or, <laughs> well, sure. or whatever it is than those. So. And and you and and your relationship with Chelsea. I mean, you you have a unique. I mean, everybody there has their own kind of relationship with her. Yeah. You you have a, a pretty unique and a pretty close relationship with her. Yeah. I mean, you guys have gotten really close. I've known her for a long time too. I've known her since I was 21, 22. Really? 14 years, yeah. Did you meet, you met her doing stand-up? Met her doing, well, we actually met, we were doing a bad improv class together. A bad improv class? It was a bad improv class. Is there class. a good one? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Not that I've been to. I've, right. I've seen I've seen some good ones, some, some groundlings maybe, something. What made this bad? It was uh, in the. It was just on Ventura Boulevard in, in the Valley, and <laughs> there it was small, and nobody went to it. And so we, I mean, the f only night I really had a show show, my dad was like the only person in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad it was a, Yeah, he thought it was great. <laughs> but of course. it wasn't. Oh. I mean, there was no, but it was. Can I have a suggestion? There, but I met Chelsea, so that helped. And, uh, and, and then you guys started hanging out, and occasionally you did stand up together on the road? Yeah, well, no, occasionally, yeah, in town, actually. Okay. We started doing stand up in town. Like mm -hmm. she, I think she did it first. She went to the Laugh Factory and did an open mic. And then I did something similar. And then we both were, you know, because we, but when we met, we were both like, oh, we want to be stand up. So it was. Now we had someone to go do it with, basically. So, there, because there's a lot of. Did you do stand up? Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, and so, yeah. So, so you know, there's a lot of bad open mics that you have to go. I keep using the word bad, which is rude. But no, but it's, <laughs> it's bad. It's bad stuff. It's tough. I keep looking that way. <clears> it's, it's all right. There's something over there. Um, it's tough. Yeah, it, but there's, you know, that, like coffee houses. Is, is Places awful. where there shouldn't be stand up. Yeah. One time I remember Chelsea said, I got us booked at a Starbucks. It was across from the Beverly Center, which is a mall. Sure. And I said, I don't want to go to that. That doesn't sound fun. But she convinced me that it was, you know, this girl booked it. This woman named Joy, I forget her last name, Auerbach, I think. She said she booked it, and we I, we should go. And they expect people. It's going to be a good crowd. And then we walked in, and there was two people there, and they were there for coffee, like more, <laughs> most people are. <laughs> they were not there for stand-up. Right. And we had to plug an amp into the back and, yep. like, it was awful. And yeah. then she made me go first and she didn't even go up because it was too embarrassing and so oh, we left. See, I love that. I, but once you've bonded over that kind of experience, yeah. so that's the thing about comedians is once you have any kind of experience like that, you could see them the rest of your life. You yep. could run them to them in 10 years and yeah. not having, having seen them. You're the best friends. Yeah, no, You've true. been through something. Um, Same but, with Chris Frangiola who also is, you know, as you know, on Chelsea Lately sure, and After sure. Lately. Sure, He and I bar were waited tables together. Okay. So, so I've known him for, in fact, he used to date one of my roommates on and off for years. So I've known him forever. And then now we all just three work together. It's amazing. It's yeah. kind of an amazing story. And, and it, really is, <clears throat> it really is like a family because you guys, that is not a job. There's no job. That's not a job. Yeah. It's you're together and that's it. And everything that happens to you and everything that comes out, it's all there. This is True. not a place where you hide your private life. It's not a no. place where you... Uh, you know, where you hide things from people, and no. if you do, you get killed. Yeah. I mean, this is like, and pranks. Oh, nonstop. Are more important, almost, take on an equal level of importance yeah. to the show. Yeah, they are more important. Your feelings aside. <laughs> what? So what, now because Chelsea likes to do those things. Yeah, she likes to do them, and then Josh likes to do them. Oh, I didn't realize he was like that, yeah. Yeah, he put, you, didn't you see where he put his, um, I was gone for the day, and... I came back the next day and I was using my computer all day and then eventually Josh and Dan Mario came in with a little flip cam and Josh handed me a picture and it was him with his balls out <laughs> on my computer mouse. <laughs> And he and and he said basically this is you and I realized I'd been using it all day, <laughs> and he just had his balls on it that morning or the night before, you, and they filmed yeah. my reaction. I was completely grossed out. I was horrified. Well, for you, that's the worst thing anybody could it's do. It's the worst thing. And then and and Dan Mario was like, you know, he said he walked by at one point and saw me using my my mouse and then touching my face, <laughs> and he felt bad for a minute. He was like, I almost told you, but he didn't. 
because oh. you can't blow a prank. You're getting more trouble. You than, can't blow a prank. No. And then Tom, and then I know I can just hear Tom Brunel laughing right now, and I can hear him telling the story. Yeah, because he would sit in the room, and then he'd recount the details. I just heard my stomach just growled so loud. I bet the microphone picked it up. It's okay. It's a, listen. When you talk about somebody putting their balls on your mouse, you're going to have you a get, reaction. You're going to get hungry. Yeah, it's gonna, yep, you're going to get hungry. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, uh, and there's no snacks at this show. No, there are not. Thanks for that, by the way. Well. Uh, at least I didn't put my, no. Um, right. Well, now, but, but this, is, this is amazing. Now, I remember we had on our, because we, we had a writing staff for After Lately, and I'm going to name them now because they're amazing. Yeah. Um, it's uh, my partner, Dean Ward. It's the Partner as in gay partner? Or partner? Yes, we're lovers. Okay. Keep going. I'm sorry to break it out, Dean, but you know what? It'll be so much easier than that. You guys time. actually would make it in a lovely couple. We would. Season mm -hmm. two. I'm very excitable. Dean is very calm. Mm -hmm. But, a, but an inferno down below. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Dean. Uh, now, now, now Brent, the great Brendan Clifford. Yes, and awesome. Amazing. And uh, the great Gil Cunha yes. who's amazing. And, and the amazing Chad Gervich, best head of hair uh, aside from you. Really in good show head business. of hair. Yeah. yeah. You can't beat it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the, but the thing that I'll say. I counterpart in the hair department. Amazing, you guys. But, but the thing that I would say that was really funny is we had our own prank. This was like the one thing that we did. And it was hysterical. And I was, I'm not good at that stuff either. So the prank was, I don't know if you remember this, but Brendan, uh, we had this Reese Witherspoon episode. Mm -hmm. And oh. Reese, we had written this episode and Brendan was excited and, and very, uh, Brendan's a guy who gets excited about stuff and just, you know, really is passionate about it. And so we had Reese Witherspoon and then we decided to pull this prank on him that Reese Witherspoon the, at the last minute had backed out. And we had written the script. She's not doing it now. Right. But Natasha Bedingfield is doing it <laughs> for some reason. Just a, just a random person to say is switching out. Yeah. yeah. Natasha Bedingfield is doing it now. She's obviously always the second choice to read with this script. And she's doing it. And we have to rewrite the whole episode. But even before that, it was like Reese wants to bring her kids on or she won't do the show. That was another part of the prank. And there were layers to it. And we wanted to get this reaction out of him. And then eventually, when we told him that, that news, that Natasha Bedingfield, he says, Jesus Christ, we're not machines. And it was like, <laughs> we were all waiting for that reaction. But the whole building was in on it. Yeah. And it was like... And nobody says any. Nobody ever but, blows but it. But days yeah. are shut down. And we're coming up with other storylines for Natasha Bedingfield. And they're good storylines. Yeah. And, and people have, are and not writing scripts. you're actually working on it. Like wasting... <laughs> Gil and Chad... Wasting are, time working it on It took this. a day yeah. to do these things. And I'm like sitting there and I'm saying, we're not getting the reaction that we want. Let's just dump out of the prank. Yeah. That was like after an hour. Dean and I are looking at, does this make any sense to you at all? And they're like, they're like, shh, Because he was shut just up. kind of fine with it. He was no, just he was, he was like, it. what? Let's stop the prank. We're not getting, yeah, because yeah. he wasn't getting upset. But to me, it was like the most amazing thing. And it really did work out well. Yeah. But Tom, and then Tom Brunel calls. Now, Tom Brunel is the head of the show. He's an executive producer. He's very busy. Yeah. But he does have the time to call from the set and say, yeah, we're not doing the Reese Witherspoon. Oh, thing. yeah, absolutely. He has, he has time to piss somebody off if he can. Like, what? I mean, not in a, you, you know what I mean? It's just crazy. That's part of a joke, yeah. It's just great. And it sort of comes from Chelsea, but then everybody kind of takes it on in their own way and does a good job at it, I think, pretty well, it's much. like when we did, did you see the Vera Wang prank that we did? I heard about it. I didn't see it, yeah. It was basically, Vera Wang was on the show, and she, and then... <laughs> They want they, Tom started this thing with Heather saying you were going to get we we're all going to get three lovely dresses from Vera Wang, <laughs> and we had an event to go to actually, and so she and Heather was you know she never gave her sizes to Deb. Tom said go give your sizes to Deb who produces the guests, and she never did, and so Tom said hey she never gave them to him let's give, give her sizes to Deb so say you did and let's say you got three amazing dresses, <laughs> so her head's about to explode you know long story short she thinks I got him. And then Tom says, let's now have you call. They set up little flip cams, you know. And they said, let's have you now call as Vera Wang and say, you know, you'll, you'll still try to get some dresses to her and maybe, like, it was this whole ridiculous thing. But I was like, she's never going to believe that I'm Vera Wang because she, hear, she hears me talk every day, you know. <laughs> He's like, no, it's on the phone and this and that. And he was like, no, but she's going to, I said, she's going to know my voice. Someone else has to do it. Tom was like, Heather? won't give it she, she'll never realize that's you she doesn't listen to you she and he was right she had she completely she talks to me every day and she thought that was very well <laughs> I didn't even disguise my voice like sometimes I was like 
No, I, I came up with some weird accent at some point. Vera Wang's from New York. She doesn't even have, you know. Oh, fantastic. And, yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's the beauty. It brought Tom great joy, though. I'm sure it did. Yeah. I'm sure it was f fantastic for him. Yeah. What, uh, now, you know, you're on that, that uh, you know, the panel of, mm -hmm. of, uh, of Chelsea lately. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pressure on that panel. Like, you've got to deliver, don't you? You do. I mean, you should, I mean, definitely. you gotta, you got you to gotta be on it. Yeah. And if you're not on it, it's probably not a good thing, right? No, you definitely need to be. I mean, if you didn't, you know, if you, somebody, sometimes you may not get something great in one show every several shows or something, but if you do it all the time, obviously it would be a problem. But, yeah, you do have to be on it. I mean, that's kind of what you're there for, and it's got to keep the energy up. And Have there been times when, you, when you've been on it and you like, <clears throat> man, I can't get a word in edgewise with these people. I'm, get, I'm getting mad now. No, there's been a couple of times I've not been able to talk as much because some people tend to go on longer. I won't say who. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But sometimes you don't get that chance, but it doesn't really, you're, it's like, whatever, now you're on every two weeks, so it's fine, because the writers are on every couple weeks. Right. So, but when it used to be, you know, once a month or something like that before I was there permanently, it was a little more, you know, like, okay, I, you know, I don't, I want to be on with people that'll let me, you know, get my jokes in and stuff. But for the most part, everybody's really giving and like, you know, sometimes you just kind of, start something and you trail off or you for you know you're but it's more fun i like to have more fun just playing off of what other people say sure and that's really fun and most people seem to be able to do that but it used to be a big event to be on the round table like it was you know i drive there and this and that and now you know people would like come to say hi to you and stuff you know but now <laughs> when you work there permanently <laughs> you go upstairs and everybody's just like oh yeah hey <laughs> <Good> <laughs> it's no. her again yeah there she is that's okay but it's cool still, obviously. It's the, it's the greatest of both worlds to get to write on it and be on it. You know? It's just very rare to be a writer-performer on a show. It yeah, just doesn't happen that much. No, it's great. Right. And on, on a daily show. Yeah. It doesn't happen. So it's almost like you forget, like, oh, I also just got to be on the show that day. Does it, does it put your life in perspective? Do you, do you have an imp you know, because you, you're grateful to be doing it. Yeah. But it's also like, you know, you're, a lot of people know you. I mean, you're, you're very well known. You have well, like no. millions, not really? Not that well known. No. Well, it's over. This interview is over. <laughs> I don't need this crap. Um, no, you you come. You know, I I didn't real. I really didn't realize this about you, um, and I should have known because I am a I'm a big you know fan of of, of show business. I yeah. mean, I know about the past. I used to work at the Friars Club. I know about all this stuff. Cool. But 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 your great uncle was Jerry Colonna. He was, yeah. Who I used to see as a kid on the McHale's Navy. I swear to God, he did like guest spots on McHale's it's Navy. funny, with those big eyes and oh, his yeah. mustache. Yeah. yeah. Not that many people, I mean, actually I'm, su I'm surprised how many people do put it together. I get, a, I will get a lot of people who will think, oh, were you related to, it's usually e emails on, like, you know, through a website or something. Sure. Wait, that sounded wrong. <laughs> Listen, what you do in the privacy of your <laughs> own home. My, through my Craigslist ads. Yeah, of course. No, it's <laughs> like, you know, through my website, someone will write me and say, where are you related to and this and that. And I put it on IMDb because, you know, I like for people to know that. It's fantastic. Yeah. How, do, what do you know? Do you know anything about him? You didn't meet him. No, I didn't meet him. My sister met him once because he lived here. We were in Arkansas. But he, my dad was out here. My sister, I don't know the whole, how it all happened. But my sister did meet him at one point. Could and then... I never got to. But it kind of runs in the, so, <clears throat> so it kind of runs in the, I'm glad that I brought it up, but it kind of, it kind of runs in the family though, is what I'm saying. Yeah. I and mean, there is some sort of line to it. No, it's cool, because I, like, I'm a big fan of like Bob Hope and Lucille Ball and like a certain era too. Yeah. So the fact that he was a big part of that, and a, a really big part of it actually, you know, do, he used do, to travel do, with Bob Hope. Do you have that, uh, do we have that Ian? We have that still? Look at this still. Now this still is, of course, that's, that's Jerry on the right there, and the man on the left, of course, is a guy named Walt Disney, and he's reading, I think that they're reading Casey at the Bat. I want to say that they're reading Casey at the Bat, okay? Probably, yeah. So they're reading Casey at the Bat, and look at this guy. I mean, this guy was a real character. Yeah, real and character. Did a lot of USO shows. Yeah. Traveled around. Mm -hmm. Did a lot of movies with Bob Hope, like The Road to the, the Road Pictures and radio, a lot yeah. of radio. He did Alice in Wonderland. He did The March Hare, I believe. Yeah. Now, now, uh, so your, your dad, how is he related? Your dad, is he related on your dad's on side? On my dad's side, yeah. yeah. And, and let me, I, I brought the Casey at the Bath thing up because is your dad, was your dad a sports writer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was. He's still alive, but he's not a sports writer anymore. So, 
Well, just his, to put it that clearly. So that career is dead. So that, but his career is dead. But he's right. still living. Mm. Sadly, no. That's he's, so sad no, he's for he's dead. moved on to something else. He's got tired of sort of the newspaper business, I think. But but you were you were brought editor. so you're brought up by a sports editor. Sports editor. Well, I, yeah, half brought up. He was out here. He you're, was out there. You were in out here. Arkansas. Where, where am I? Where are we? I don't even know where we are. We're near Ralph's. That's Which, all I know. Okay. Uh, we're in California. Not so much. Okay. Uh, he and, and so he was. Now your folks were split. Yeah, I came from a, a broken home. Uh huh. Talk about it. Into that camera. No. Um, <laughs> this is the place to share it. No, I'm they, not kidding. He was li he was on doubt. I know you want me to get into that weird meditation yeah, thing. Get into I'm it. I'm not going to do that. I don't this like yoga. I don't like meditation. It's the place to do it. This, this is, is the time. Listen, it's Rapture Day on Saturday. I know. So you still have what a you, few days because then it is over. What do you think that guy's going to do when he realizes that? I mean, it, ho hopefully he's wrong, right? But. Um, what do you think he's going to do when he realizes that it's not the rapture and uh, that he made all this big stink about it? You just keep putting it off. You say, well, then it's next week. You say, well, then it'll be on the 4th. Well, he did it before, though. He did I'm it sorry, in the my nine. Mayan calendar is off yeah. by a year. I don't know what you. I don't know what you do. Because he did it in the nine in the nineties. Yeah. He did it, and then he said, "Oh, that's you know what? I added up wrong." <laughs> I added up my he calculator. He did. He really said. He basically said that, and then he and then he gave it this date. But now he's like, it's happening at six p.m. Mm -hmm, six o'clock. Yeah. Did I say six? I meant three. It's East Coast time. Oh, no. is it East Coast time? Yeah, it's not happening until three. No, I think, well, this is the Y2K thing, you know, in a way. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, this is a little bigger than Y2K. This is 2% of people are going to heaven and 98% are going to hell. That's what he said. It's like people go, you know, in earthquakes or something. And where do the Jews fit into this? You guys just have to stay here. We live in hell yeah. right now. Yeah. We're in you hell now. You actually have to stay here. <laughs> we have to stay. By ourselves. <laughs> well, that'll be, it'll be, I don't think that's a good idea. I, I, don't, I think we'll drive each other crazy. Nate or whatever. No, that's where we have to stay. Yeah. You that's, stay at Nate and Al's. You have to stay in the kitchen at, at <laughs> Nate and Al's. And you have to share a table with Larry King, <laughs> whose pants, by the way, are up to his larynx at this point. I, I think that his body is getting it looks shorter. So, he looks so weird now. He does. He looks like the. This crypt is the body right creeper, here. The crypt keeper, or whatever. Like it is. the crypt keeper. No, yeah. it's amazing. And somebody introduced. They brought he, not him, but Steve Allen brought me into the Friars Club. Made me a member of the Friars Club, and then he introduced me to Larry King, and it was like this. It's like uh, Ed Krasnick, Larry King, and Larry was like. Was he? Very nice to meet you, Mr. King. <laughs> That's what it? is keeping you Did alive he ever say right now? <laughs> I know, is no, he in seriously. An oxygen tank? I think he was. In that the tank. When was that? Uh, this was a while ago, and he was still. This was like he was already good then. I think it's like weekend at Bernie's at this point. I think that someone dead for so is long. just is just toting him around. He was such a great. You know, his radio show was so great. If anybody ever listened to the radio show, it was amazing. Anyway. That's not important. What's oh. important is you. You're in the important person here. Um, good segue. What, uh, so now tell me about the book because uh, oh, yeah. I want to get to the book. What, okay. you, so you get a book, do they come to you and they say, Sarah, it's time to write a book? Or do you come and say, I have a pitch for a book? Well, it, it's funny, I was, I was working on a pitch for a book yeah. and then an agent came to me first. Yeah. And said before I tried to pitch it, and which is fine because I wouldn't have known where to <laughs> pitch it anyway. I didn't need an agent for that. Sure. He emailed me and just said, you know, I think you're really funny, obviously, and um, I don't think he's straight, which is, you know, <sighs> what? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. And <laughs> you know what that means. I don't know. And he said, I th you know, I think you do you have a book in you? And I said, I do actually. Yeah. Um, and so I wrote the pitch out that I had kind of been working on. I wrote it. I, it was good. It forced me to actually finish it because I had sort of been like, oh, I don't know. When I'll, you know. So you finished the book. Finished, well, I finished the pitch finished and the then pitch. we sold it to Random House, Jesus. to Villard tra uh, Trade Paperbacks. It's, it's a paperback. I don't think I'm well known enough to sell hardcover. It's too expensive. Just a matter of time. So, yeah. Yeah. So I went with paperback. And um, yeah, they bought it. And then I just, I literally just turned in the second draft today. So, well, congratulations. Thank you. It's an amazing achievement. It's a huge achievement. And then title, it's changed since I saw you before. What is the title? What was it and what is it now? It was, well, right now it's Life As I Blow It. 
That's the title. Okay. Which I think is funnier than what it was, which is you can't always want what you get, which was just too much to confusing. think about. It's too much to think about. Yeah, confusing. It needs to be quick and like... Life as you blow it. I like life as you blow it. Yeah. Life as you blow it. That's yeah. good. That's good. And, and basically the tenor is, these are real, is it real life stories that have, anecdotes that have happened to you throughout? Yeah, it's basically me moving, fr- I mean, growing up in Arkansas with the family who ran a volunteer fire department and a mom who worked at a funeral home and a stepdad who worked at Tyson Chicken and then going to school there and majoring in theater at the University of Arkansas where all the big famous actresses go, right? And then moving here. So really what you're telling me is it's like in a month this will be a sitcom. Um, this, I, this is an actual, yeah. like if you were going to pitch a show, yes. this would be the show that you would yes. pitch. But instead you wrote a book well, and, and you'll kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to do both. It's, yeah. a, it's a show. Of course yeah. it's a show. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. And, and, and did you have a good time writing it? Because it's not easy to write a book. I did. I mean, it was during After Lately. For, you know, it was, it was a lot, definitely. Yeah. But it was a good lot. I mean, it's nothing to complain about, that's for sure. Sure. I had a lot of fun writing it. I, the first time I got the first round of notes, I was sort of like, oh, God, you know, I had all this work to do, and I was a little stressed. But this time, after I did that and got through it, which was fun, but just a lot of work, that's all. Yeah. That's, you know, um, they came back with very few notes, and then I had even more fun because I was like, okay, now I feel comfortable that I'm doing this well, so somebody's, you know, they're liking it, so. Now, does Chelsea have any feedback in this process? Does she read it at all, Chelsea, or is it, it has nothing to do no, with Chelsea? No, no, it doesn't have anything doesn't to do with them. doesn't have anything to do with them. No, nothing to do with them. I didn't go with her book agent or publishing. I mean, I didn't try to go to her, her right, either way, you know. Either way. This guy came to me, so I just went with that, and I just felt like she has an amazing book agent, amazing. Chelsea, yeah. you know, um, and publishing house, obviously, but. Um, I felt like it would be a, maybe a conflict for, yeah. you know, we're a little similar in some ways and stuff, so I just thought, oh, I should do this. So no fee- no feedback from her? She didn't read it or anything like that? I, no, I haven't. Ha- I, actually, she did read the proposal after. It was already, um, you know, a little bit of it anyway. Um, but no, I haven't really, I don't want to bug her with that. She's got enough going on. She's got enough on. going on. And... It's it's separate and it's different. And Are you crying right now? I'm sorry. <laughs> I just saw a little, if I just was. a little bit of a. Um, I'm you know, crying because I'm still sitting here. <laughs> it's very painful for you, isn't it? Uh, I'm wearing an onion cologne, so maybe that's the that's reason. That's probably what it is. I did think that you smelled weird when I came in, but I just assumed it was the okay. meditation. No, it is the meditation, but it's also the onion. Or uh, the medication. Oh, I'm on such medication. At home, it's like Valley of the Dolls. What are you on? What am I not on? Uh, let's do they that. Cro- let's just cross it up. Really don't even start it. with that now. It was good, uh, though. It <laughs> don't good. start with me. It looks real good. It did, yeah. Yeah, if you think this is good, go close. Yeah, And then close you'll up. see things. Um, uh, God, I had something else I was going to talk to you about. I can't remember what it was. Is it, it written right there? Yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> yeah, I, I see it. We do something on this show that's really weird, uh, as if this hasn't been. We do No, we do something on the show that's really... <laughs> we ask you to come. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you showed up. I guess the joke's on you. No. Now, um, no, this is, um, this is something called Fast Five. I'm going to ask you five questions. We answer them in 60 seconds. They are not yes or no questions. They're thought questions. It's just weird stuff. What if I don't have any thoughts? Then you just say, I don't have any thoughts. And, and I say, and scene. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So put 60 seconds so on the gonna clock. you're going to ask a question, I'm going to give an answer? Or I'm just going to give an answer. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd be a great game show host, wouldn't I? Yeah, really, do something like that. Yeah, you could give an answer. It's like you're giving if me, you it like. feels like you're giving me options. Yeah, if you want. I don't like to pin anybody down. I don't have boundaries. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, fast five, 60 seconds on the clock, and here we go. Uh, the next fragrance from Chloe and Lamar. Gross. Beautiful. Um, the Partridge Family Band manager's name. Max. Great. Um, <laughs> it's Reuben Kincaid. Um, the, Max <laughs> sounds like a band manager's name, doesn't it? It should have, but that was the original name, and then yeah. they changed yeah. it. Yeah, I have the pilot, the you, original pilot you, in my car. You have the pilot. Um, a movie that changed your life in some way. Cujo. Uh, <laughs> I actually love that movie. I keep remembering I the dog sleep. I in the never, thing. I could never, ever, ever sleep alone after that. After for, I had to sleep in my sister's bed for three months. 
I love that. I, I was love so the drool. afraid of that dog. Oh, it was a good It was dog. the first time I got scared by a movie. That dog was in therapy <laughs> after that movie. The dog was in therapy. What a script. Um, the best Chelsea put down you've ever heard. Some of the funny, funny thing that she might have said. I don't, I don't know if it was a put down, but somebody today asked her what a coffee enema was, and she said, you just have to go to, the, go to Starbucks and it's in a different line. <laughs> and I, it's not a put down, but it made me laugh so hard because it just came out. It came out of her mouth very quickly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. She's yeah. funny. My God, she's funny. Is that and, sixty seconds? After no, it's happened? about a minute and a half now. Uh, but this is the last one, and it's always my favorite question, okay. and that's who killed JFK. Oh, the government. <laughs> yes. Thank. Th finally. <laughs> Other than. Or Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> Finally! <laughs> Jesus Christ, this yeah. has been going on for so long. Finally! Yeah. All right. I know, I actually have that documentation in my car, too. I want to read the Partridge Family first, script, pilot, and then the JFK report. That's the order you would go in? You wouldn't go with the JFK report? Oh, the Partridge Family is, was a great show. I don't know if anybody remembers I actually have that. a little bit of a fascination with, the, with JFK and the whole thing, even it's though it wasn't thing. alive. So. Oh, it's my... Uh, yeah. uh, to me, there's no greater story in the history of our country no. than the JFK story. It's a fantastic... And even seeing a bad miniseries... Did you watch that? I watched every episode. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good, but, but it wasn't bad. why did they put, like... I, I saw Bobby Kennedy. My sister worked for him growing up. Yeah. Why? Really? I never remember that his teeth protruded <laughs> eight feet from his mouth. No. Would but we that not guy, have known who it was? But that guy, who was that? He was good. I uh, forget his name. Uh, Paul's P. It starts with a P. I know. He was on, uh, he's a good actor. Uh, he was great, I no, thought. No, he, he was good. And Greg Kinnear, and Greg Kinnear, Kinnear was, good. was good. Kenny Holmes was weird. She had a weird accent sometimes. She was, it's like, okay, was Jackie Kennedy like drugged all the time? Yeah. Was she on drugs all the time? I don't I think remember. She might that. have been sometimes. Well, she wore a pillbox hat with real pills. Yeah. Why not? I don't know what that is. Um, it's all a right. Great move. How, how about that? Okay, so let's take a look uh, quickly. I want to show you, we have a web store. And oh. I'm very excited. I said, look, one of the great things about doing this show is this logo. Ryan, uh, our graphics person, did this logo, and it's fantastic. I love it. And th these are some of the uh, items that you can either buy at the web store, or maybe we'll give them away as prizes. Oh. There's the Humor Me tie. There's the wow. mug. There's the coaster. Oh, the coaster with your face on it. Yeah. And, uh, and there's the t-shirt, and then there's the silver shirt, which I think is really great. I'd like to wear a tie with your face on it. Listen, I don't... But I don't wear ties, but... If I did wear a tie... Look at uh, that. Yeah, that's very snazzy. And coming soon, of course, for the, for the kids, the baby bibs, and then the jumpers, and then we have the uh, Hanukkah menorah with my head on it. <laughs> and then we have a talus. Wow. Um, fantastic. Do you have like a dartboard with your face? <laughs> I'm sure we could. Uh, I know that there would be people who would want to throw at it. Um, so that's the web store, and we hope to like give away uh, prizes pretty soon. And, you know, uh, this has been great. Yeah. <laughs> no, it has. Thank you very it really much. Has it's been really great. fun. Yeah, it's no, a pleasure you. to see you. Thank you. See you soon. Right. See you soon. Thank you. That's Sarah Colonna, and you know she's. We're gonna see after lately is gonna come back. Pre, yeah. You know, in the in the near future, and then uh, Chelsea lately. You can see her on Chelsea lately, and then uh, you want to read her book, Life as I Blow It. Yeah, it'll be out in February. It'll be out in February, and then she's got a few more projects on her way to the car. Uh, and, and I do have to pee, so. And then she has to pee, so let's let her let's let her get out of here. And and on her way out, let's play another clip from After Lately, one of my favorite clips. Take a look at this. Next week we're gonna have uh, Wayne Fetterman from New York. We're gonna have Laura Keitlinger after that, and Howie Mandel coming up in a few weeks. Nice. So my message to you is keep coming back. It works if you work it. <laughs> First of all, when did she become the world's most beloved cleaning lady? And how was I supposed to know her kid was in the hospital? Because everybody knows that, Brad. What, not, what do you mean everybody knows? Not everybody knows that, but your Heather doesn't know that. Well, Heather, Heather doesn't know who the vice president is. That's not saying much, Brad. The bottom line is you gotta get her hired back. Okay, so you, sit, so, you Sarah, you sit next to me, and then Heather, you sit there. And then your first line to her is gonna be, you've been engaged 19 times because you're a whore. Yeah, you've been engaged 19 times because you're a whore! Takes one to know one. What? Excuse me? That's not your line. I can't work with her, Chelsea. She's a psycho. She's a psycho. Oh, You're really? Psycho. Yeah. I, I'm the psycho. Yeah. What, what is going on with you two? I don't even know. 
Ask her. Chelsea, earlier today, we were in the media lounge, and I was doing a talk show. Sarah was my guest. She was rude, she was unruly, and she was trying to be very cruel and hurt my feelings. Oh, What's on, on, a, on a fake talk show? Yeah. You guys are family. You need to act like family. Brad, shut up. And where are your boobs? You don't even have boobs. Ugh. Oh. Listen, I am sorry, OK? Can we now, like, go back to reality and do this show? Yeah, can you not hold up us doing actually something that's going to be on TV with something that's never going to be on TV? You don't get it. You know what? I don't see how you guys expect me to recreate drama on this show oh, when I have so much drama going on on my own show. On your own fake yes. show? Yes, on my show that you will never be a guest on ever again. Where are you going? Just, I need a break. Uh, <sighs> Jiffy, go put a dress on so we can continue shooting, please. But that doesn't make sense to the sketch. Really? Do it right now and then apologize first, actually. I... Say you're sorry. I'm sorry? I'm 